Welcome. This is a behavior and training video from Operation Pause for Homes. I'm Lisa, a certified trainer with Operation Pause for Homes. As you can see, this is part one on loose leash walking. Information on this topic is being split up because it's a big, important topic and one that many struggle with. When I work with clients on this issue, I always start with equipment and why loose leash walking is often challenging. So let's see what we'll cover today. Why loose leash walking is a challenge. Do's and don'ts. Equipment, what to choose and why. Collars, harnesses and leashes, and how to properly fit equipment. Let's get started. This is the first reason loose leash walking is challenging. Dogs don't naturally walk in a straight line or at a slow pace. Dogs naturally move in different directions following scents, sights, and sounds. And most dogs move far more quickly than us. The average speed of all dog breeds combined is about 15 to 20 miles per hour. However, the fastest dog breed, the Greyhound, can reach speeds of up to 45 miles per hour. Well, even runners in great shape maintain only about 12 miles per hour. In addition to a dog's natural walking style, there's another huge reason loose leash walking is challenging. You're asking your dog to do a behavior for a really long time. If your dog could sit or stay for 30 minutes, well, that would be impressive. Loose leash walking is no different. You're asking your dog to behave a certain way, to be near you, not to pull, not to sniff, not to cross in front of you, etc., for a really long time. Having the right equipment is a great start to ensure your dog is comfortable and safe on walks. So some do's and don'ts. Do's of loose leash walking. Do use a flat collar, a martingale collar, or a properly fitted harness. Do abide by your local leash laws when deciding on the length of your leash. Don't use a prong collar, choke chain, or any collar that puts pressure on your dog's throat and no shock collars. Also, don't use a retractable leash. For dogs who walk well on a leash, a flatter martingale collar may suffice. In collar versus harness, you need to consider if the dog has injuries, medical conditions, or physical traits that make a harness a better choice. Brachycephalic dogs are flat-faced dogs with shortened snouts and smaller nostrils. For example, pugs, bulldogs, and shih tzus. These are best suited to a harness. A dog's trachea or windpipe is more sensitive than humans. So for dogs with small tracheas, for example, a chihuahua, or with tracheal issues, a harness is again a better choice. For dogs that pull, a harness is often a better option. As you can see, flat buckle collars can have different types of closures. A martingale collar always has that loop within a loop. That small loop might be cloth or it sometimes can be a chain. Canine Houdinis, dogs who are good at slipping out of collars, are best with a properly fitted martingale or a very secure harness. These are two top rated harnesses. The balance harness has clip on the neck to avoid having to put, put it over the dog's head. The front range harness has more padding so for dogs who have very short coats. Both have an attachment option in the front and in the back for different leashing options. For example, buckling to a seat belt, using a long line, a double clip leash, etc. 
Head halters can be very effective with dogs that pull, but there are concerns about the dog's neck being hurt if she moves suddenly. Also, whereas most dogs readily accept a harness, head halters usually require an acclimation period and some dogs just never like them. With the head halty, that has a fixed tightness. With the gentle leader, that tightens from leash tension. As far as leashes, most people use a four to six foot leash. A shorter leash may be useful in urban areas where you're having to navigate around people and other dogs. Using a retractable leash is almost never a good idea. They can be unsafe and they teach your dog that they don't need to be at your side. You can have a traffic handle, single or double clip, and even a convertible leash that can be used as a short leash, hands-free device, and multi-pup walker. Be sure to consider the right handle size for your wrist and hand and material. Proper fit is really important to keep your dog safe and comfortable. An ill-fitted collar or harness can lead to escape or injury. For collars and harness straps, you should have slack enough for one to two fingers only. For harnesses, always follow the instructions that come with the harness. In future presentations, we'll be discussing many more components of successful loose leash walking. Thanks so much for listening.